Hello everyone, uh, our today's lesson is for master students and the name of the course, the name of the content is um, Russian uh, Realism in 19th century and uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky's literary activity, especially crime and punishment. And uh, so here you see three contents about our lesson. Uh, firstly, we will talk about the late 19th century Russian literature and um, the character characteristics of critical realism and also Fyodor Dostoevsky's life and um, literary activities. Why uh, did he play main role in Russian literature? And then um, at the end we will talk about Oedipus complex and his works. It's really important one for you. And uh, the second content, the major themes in crime and punishment and Raskolnikov's internal monologue. And uh, the th third content is the analysis of the main character Raskolnikov and uh, the theme innocence or guilt. Let's get started. Uh, late 19th century Russian literature. So here we have uh, four headings uh, against the background of social and political distemper, the general characteristics of 19th century Russian realism, an emphasis on character and atmosphere rather than on plot and action, the leading realists. So uh, unusual uh, flourishing of Russian realistic literature in the second half of the 19th century uh, was going on against uh, the background of social and political distemper then started in 1840. And um, the general uh, characteristics of 19th century uh, Russian realism include the urge to explore the human condition in a spirit of serious inquiry Although without excluding humor and satire, the tendency to set works or fiction in the Russia of the writer's own day and the cultivation of straightforward style, but one also involving factual detail and an underlying tolerance of human weakness and wickedness. So the leading realists um, began to be published in the late uh, 1840s. The novelists Ivan Turgenev, uh, Ivan Goncharov, Fyodor Dostoevsky and uh, Leo Tolstoy. And um, so here we will talk about especially what's critical realism and what's the features of uh, realism in Russian literature. Um, so. Uh, critical realism is a trend uh, or method in realistic literature and art uh, in the 19th and 20th centuries. The concept of critical realism was adopted by Soviet literary uh, and art criticism uh, from Maxim Gorky, who used the expression critical realism in 1934 to describe the stress on a on an expose in realistic uh, literature of the 19th century. However, the uh, revelatory themes by no means exclude an element of uh, reaffirmation in the realistic art of the 19th and 20th uh, centuries. Uh, realism is a movement in art which started in the mid-19th century in France and later spread to the entire world. Realism entered literature at almost at the same time and its uh, real objective was to root out what is called fantastic and romantic in literature and art, to insert what is real. In literature, writers use realism as a literary technique to describe story elements such as setting characters, themes, etc. without using elaborate imagery or figurative language such as similes and metaphors and so on. Through realism, writers explain things without a decorative language or sugarcoating the events. Realism is something opposite to romanticism and idealism. 
and uh, what's its function? Let's talk about it. Uh, realism uh, attempts to illustrate life without romantic subjectivity and idealization. It focuses on the actualities of life and truthfully treats the commonplace characters of everyday life. The purpose of using realism is to emphasize the reality and morality that is usually relativistic and uh, intrinsic for the people as well as the society. This sort of realism makes the readers face reality as it happens in the world, rather than in the make-believe world of fantasy. And uh, the main representative of realism, especially critical realism in Russian literature, uh, was Fyodor Dostoevsky. And um, he was a Russian novelist and short story writer uh, whose psychological penetration into the darkest recesses of the human heart, together with his unsurpassed moments of illumination, had an immense influence on 20th century fiction. Dostoevsky is usually regarded as one of the finest novelists who ever lived. Literary modernism, existentialism and various schools of psychology, theology and literary criticism have been profoundly shaped by his ideas. His works are often called prophetic because he so accurately predicted how Russia's revolutionaries would behave if they come to power. And in his time, he was also um, renowned for his activity as a journalist. Dostoevsky is commonly regarded uh, as one of the greatest psychologists in the history of literature. He specialized in the analysis of uh, pathological states of mind that lead to insanity, murder and suicide and in the exploration of the emotions of humiliation, self-destruction, uh, tyrannical domination and murderous rage. And uh, I have written main um, novels and novellas by Dostoevsky uh, on this slide. Uh, and uh, as you know, Dostoevsky is best known for his novella Notes from the Underground and for four long novels, Crime and Punishment, The Idiot, The Possessed, it's also called uh, The Demons and the Devils, uh, and The Brothers uh, Karamazov, um, and also a Gambler, novella Gambler, and humiliate, Humiliated and Insulted. Each of these works is famous for its psychological profundity. But we will talk about especially crime and punishment. Uh, let's talk just um, introductory um, about introductory information. It's the second of Dostoevsky's full-length novels following his return uh, from 10 years of exile in Siberia. Crime and Punishment is considered the first great novel of his major period of writing. Since its publication, it has been acclaimed as one of the uh, supreme achievements in world literature. Crime and Punishment focuses on the mental anguish and moral dilemmas of Raskolnikov, who was the protagonist, and... Um, who formulates a plan to kill an uh, unscrupulous pawnbroker uh, for her money. Before the killing, Raskolnikov believes that with the money he could liberate himself from poverty and go on to perform great deeds. However, once it's done, he finds himself wracked with confusion, paranoia and disgust for what he has done. His justifications uh, disintegrate completely as he struggles with guilt and horror and confronts the real world consequ consequences of his deed. His first masterpiece, the novel, is a psychological analysis of the poor former student Raskolnikov, whose theory that he's an extraordinary person able to take an, uh, on the spiritual responsibility of using evil 
um, evil uh, spirit and this means to uh, achieve humanitarian ends uh, leads him to murder. The act produces nightmarish guilt in Raskolnikov. The story is one of the finest studies of the psychopathological uh, of guilt written in any uh, language. And uh, I found major themes of this novel. Sorry, I want to ch check. Yes, it's. Sorry. So, major themes. Um, here have um, eight themes that are major in this novel, but it doesn't mean that they are just only themes in this novel. Of course, you can find out uh, more themes that are uh, described in this novel, but I chose just uh, main themes. Let's talk about the family theme. So, uh, relationships between family members uh, and the formation of fam families through marriage are central to the novel. Raskolnikov has a fraught relationship with his mother and sister, whom he recognizes as having made great sacrifices for his own happiness. He feels repulsed by their charity and tries to break off relations with them. But Raskolnikov nevertheless feels uh, protective of his sister in whom he confides and of his mother. Apart from, sorry, apart from um, Okay, sorry. Apart from an engagement to uh, his landlord's daughters, a sickly girl who dies uh, before they can be married, Raskolnikov expresses little interest in starting a family of his own. This is in contrast to others in the novel. For example, uh, the second character, Razumikhin, from the first, is taken by Dunya and offers to protect her and her mother. In fact, as Raskolnikov withdraws from his family, Razumikhin appears to take over his duties and later marries Dunya with um, Raskolnikov's approval. And uh, Raskolnikov's impetus towards his family are mirrored and opposed by Sonia, who gives everything, her reputation and happiness, in order to provide for Marmeladov, Katerina and the children. Sonia and Raskolnikov later form a family a unit while in exile in Siberia and Lucien wishes to marry Dunya for practical reasons and he believes he is doing Dunya an enormous favor. For him, family is a means of beginning a brilliant career as a public servant. And uh, Svidrigailov, the um, inveterate womanizer, tries to seduce Dunya. Uh, he's a noble's libertine, satisfied only by new uh, sexual con conquests. And although Raskolnikov's rehabilitation is only hinted at in the epilogue, it seems clear that Sonia will play a role in his transformation from confused, nihilistic, criminal to penitent. In Sonia's total obedience and generosity, Raskolnikov sees an uh, example of Christian love, um, emphasized by a final uh, reference to the story of Lazarus, which, uh, incidentally, he has had a much harder time uh, recognizing in his own mother and sister. A family is an eternal source of conflict in Dostoevsky's novels. It's also the only means of escaping one's loneliness and maintaining one's sanity. And the second theme is money and poverty. I would say that it's the main theme of this novel. Because Raskolnikov's financial situation uh, at the start of the novel is dire. He has been forced to suspend his low studies because he cannot afford tuition. He barely eats and lives in a minuscule apartment. Uh, his clothes are rags. 
yet he cares a little for money. Uh, when he does receive it, he often gives it away to help a young drunk woman or later to pay Katerina for Marmelado's funeral. Other characters either have significant troubles with money or come into large amounts. For example, Pulheria and Dunia uh, live in strained circumstances in the provinces and Pulheria gets by uh, on the dregs of a small pension and um, Marmeladov has almost no money, leaving his wife uh, Catherine and uh, children to manage with next to nothing. And Svidrigailov inherits a good deal from his wife after her death. He offers Dunya an enormous amount if she will marry him, but ends up giving away much of his money before killing himself. Lucin, who wishes to marry Dunya, is a self-made clerk who feels that an impoverished woman makes a more dependable, more devoted wife. Yet Raskolnikov's poverty, though it uh, aggravates his mental condition, is not the true cause of the murders, nor does it seem strictly to motivate any of the plots, marriages or other intrigues. Much of the money in the novel is either given away or inherited. Very few male characters, uh, Razumikhin for example, is a notable exception. And um, then female characters tend to be forced into degrading circumstances in order to get by. And Raskolnikov learns after his conviction that the pound broker had a good deal less money than he had hoped initially. But he never actively worked to claim his money. And uh, the prosecutors take this as evidence of Raskolnikov's mental instability. It turns out that the labor camp for, uh, for um, Raskolnikov actually represents a general betterment of his material circumstances. His uh, rehabilitation will come through a spiritual and ethical rebirth and uh, not through a momentary windfall. Uh, he did not kill for money and he cannot be reformed by money. So the third theme is coincidence and free will. The novel is rife with coincidence. Uh, do events happen just because or by accident? Or are people beginning to suspect Raskolnikov of the murders? The occurrence and recurrence of events in the text develops a complex uh, argument on the nature of free will or the extent to which humans determine the course of their lives. Raskolnikov asks himself repeatedly whether he ever consciously chose to kill the two women and Dostoevsky's language uh, with its insistence on automatic or mechanical action makes it appear that Raskolnikov and other characters do not determine their own fates. Nearly every character in the novel has a brush with coincidence or free will. And the murder itself is defined by a coincidence. If there were no painters working on the second floor, Raskolnikov would not have been able to escape via their diversion. And he runs into Marmeladov in a tavern. Although Raskolnikov rarely drinks or visits bars, Marmeladov is later killed by a wagon uh, while Raskolnikov is out walking. Sonia, Marmeladov's daughter, uh, later becomes Raskolnikov's friend and confidant. And Svidrigailov, husband to the wealthy Marfa, is Dunya's employer. And, um, and also he nearly seduces Dunya, blames her for seducing him, and has her fired. Uh, Svidrigailov later turns up in Petersburg and sitting behind a wall in his apartment. And um, adjacent to Sonia's, he overhears Raskolnikov's admission of guilt. And coincidence has two purposes in the text. First, uh, paranoiacs tend to spot coincidence in chance uh, events and derive causation from them. To Raskolnikov, all events seem to point to others noticing his guilt. By placing coincidences throughout the text, uh, Dostoevsky increases the novel's dramatic pressure and mimics the, con mm, the 
the constriction of uh, Raskolnikov's mental state. And the second uh, one is novels themselves are experience uh, in coincidence and free will. Dostoevsky never provides a single clear motive for Raskolnikov's murders, uh, which both makes the murders seem more real, more uh, plausible as mistake-riddled human activities, and resist an easy moral at the novel's end. For Dostoevsky, novels must represent all the mm, messiness of life, its coincidence, false starts, and blind alleys. What does it mean to be in uh, one's right mind? It's madness and intoxication, the fourth theme. Raskolnikov is presented uh, from the beginning as a character on the brink of mental collapse. He talks to himself in public, lies in bed all day in his small apartment and barely eats. He walks aimlessly around Petersburg, and he often does not remember where he goes or what he does. Razumikhin, Pulcheria and Dunya fear for Raskolnikov's mental state, uh, um, and um, uh, he, um, his poverty uh, just uh, almost um, ruins his life, and later his guilt and paranoia over the murder. Many other characters are also touched by mental illness or drunkenness. Uh, Marmelado's alcoholism uh, prevents him from holding down a job and supporting his family. He is eventually crushed under a wagon and uh, Katerina, his wife, uh, succumbs to madness uh, prompted by her grief over her husband's death and the weight of their family's poverty. And Razumikhin is a notable uh, drinker who first arranged for Pulcheria's and Dunya's comfort in Petersburg while deeply intoxicated. And Sevidrugalov is so broken by Dunya's unwillingness to elope with him that he decides to kill himself. And Pulcheria's grief over Raskolnikov's condition and exile drives her illness and death. Her grief, uh, like Katerina's, is essentially indistinguishable from madness. Although questions of madness and sanity uh, dominate the novel, Raskolnikov never admits that his crime was caused by temporary insanity. Although this, more or less, is the verdict rendered after the, his uh, confession. And Raskolnikov cannot find anyone, uh, anyone uh, reason uh, for killing the two women. Indeed, it becomes clear that his madness derives uh, more from the crime than it uh, does prompt the crime. Criminality, morality and guilt is another theme of this novel, and uh, they are central preoccupations of Dostoevsky. And Raskolnikov um, commits the great crime of the novel. He robs and murders the pawnbroker and her sister Lizaveta, an innocent uh, bystander. Raskolnikov must come to terms with this feeling or lack of feeling of remorse for the act and his motive is never fully resolved. He argues that uh, the uh, pawnbroker did no good for society and therefore her death is of no consequence. He also admits later to not understanding why he has killed. The remainder of the novel... Oh, sorry. Uh, charts uh, Raskolnikov's uh, interactions with friends, family and uh, pol police representatives. His friend uh, Razumikhin, uh, sister Dunya and mother Pulcheria suspect Raskolnikov's guilt only after many days. Others like uh, Porfiry Petrovich, the investigator, and uh, Zamyotov, uh, a law clerk, take early note of Raskolnikov's strange behavior and obsession with the murders. 
It's revealed that, as a law student, Raskolnikov has written a magazine article claiming that extraordinary individuals might overstep the law, commit crimes, in order to create new laws and a new social order. He cites Napoleon and Muhammad as great oversteppers. Raskolnikov comes to recognize that, uh, although he has acted believing himself, to be an extraordinary individual, his remorse and subsequent mental, mental uh, instability uh, prove he is ordinary after all. And this, more than anything, uh, convinces him to uh, confess his guilt to the authorities. He is sentenced to eight years hard labor in Siberia, where Sonia joins him. Other characters, uh, too, have brushes with criminality and immortality. Sonia lives as a prostitute and her father, Marmelatov, is a terrible drunk who cannot maintain a job. His wife, Katerina, beats her children and Svidrigailov, who attempted to seduce Dunya in the provinces, continues with his womanizing in Petersburg and is rumored to have poisoned his wife, Marfa, after an argument. Svidrigailov later commits suicide. Thus, even as Raskolnikov attempts his moral rehabilitation in Siberia, Petersburg remains a city of crime and uh, temptation. So, uh, other theme is alienation from society. Uh, alienation is the primary theme of crime and punishment. At first, uh, Raskolnikov's pride uh, separates him from society, and then he sees himself as superior to all other people and so cannot relate to anyone. Within uh, his personal uh, philosophy, he sees other people as tools and uses them for his own ends. After committing the murders, his isolation uh, grows because of his intense guilt and the half delirium into uh, which his guilt throws him. Over and over again, Raskolnikov pushes away the people who are trying to help him, including Sonia, Dunya, Pulcheria, uh, Razumikhin, and even Porfiry Petrovich, and then suffers the consequences. In the end, he finds the total alienation that he has brought upon himself intoler intolerable. Only in the epilogue, when he finally realizes that he loves Sonia, does uh, Raskolnikov break uh, through uh, the wall of pride and self-centeredness that has uh, separated him from society. And uh, the psychology of crime and punishment, uh, the manner in which the novel addresses crime and punishment is not exactly what one would expect. The crime is committed in part one and the punishment comes hundreds of pages later in the epilogue. The real focus of the novel is not on those two endpoints but on what lies between them and uh, in-depth exploration of the psychology of a criminal. The inner world of Raskolnikov with all of its doubts, deliria, and second-guessing, fear and despair in the heart of the story. Um, and Dostoevsky c concerns himself not with the actual uh, repercussions of the murder, but with the way the murder forces Raskolnikov to deal with uh, tormenting guilt. Indeed, by focusing too little on Raskolnikov's uh, imprisonment, Dostoevsky seems uh, to suggest that actual punishment is much less terrible than the stress and anxiety of trying to avoid punishment. Porfiry Petrovich emphasizes uh, the psychological angle of the novel as he uh, shrewdly realizes that Raskolnikov is the killer and makes several speeches in which he details the workings of Raskolnikov's mind after the killing. Because he understands that a guilt-ridden criminal must necessarily experience mental torture, and he is certain that Raskolnikov will eventually confess or go mad. The expert mind games uh, that uh, he plays with Raskolnikov uh, strengthen the sense that the novel's outcome is inevitable because of the nature of the human, uh, human psyche. 
And the last theme is nihilism. Uh, nihilism was a philosophical position developed in Russia in, uh, in the 1850s and 1860s, uh, known for negating more, in the words of uh, Lebeziatnikov. It rejected uh, family and societal bonds and emotional and aesthetic uh, concerns in favor of a strict materialism, or the idea that there is no mind or soul outside of the psych psychological uh, world and also physical world. Linked to nihilism is uh, utilitarianism um, or the idea that uh, moral decisions uh, should be based on the rule of the greatest happiness for the largest number of people. And um, then um, Raskolnikov originally justifies the murder of uh, Aliona on uh, utilitarian grounds, claiming that the laws has been removed from society. Whether or not the murder is actually a utilitarian act, Raskolnikov is certainly a nihilist, completely unsentimental for most of the novel and he cares nothing about the emotions of others. Similarly, uh, he utterly disregards social conventions that run counter to the austere interactions that he desires with the world. However, at the end of the novel, as Raskolnikov discovers love, he throws off uh, his nihilism. Uh, through this action, the novel condemns nihilism as empty. So we talked about the themes and let's talk about symbols. Uh, there are four main symbols of this novel. The first one is Haymarket. The Haymarket recurs uh, throughout the novel, a seedy part of St. Petersburg. It's filled with taverns and vendors of cheap wares and serves as a gathering place for prostitutes, gamblers and criminals. Raskolnikov often finds himself in this uh, hay market, especially when he sets out walking with no given destination in mind. Sonia works in this area as a prostitute and many of Raskolnikov's chance encounters take place here. It's near the hay market that he overhears Lizaveta telling two vendors when she will be out of the old woman's apartment. It's also near the hay market that Raskolnikov spots Svidrigailov much later in a tavern only to realize that Svidrigailov told him two days earlier to meet in exactly that spot. In this sense, the hay market represents a location of eternal return, a place where Raskolnikov seems fated to go and where important events inevitably happen. The disorder and criminality of the Haymarket are an eternal and external representation of the chaos and madness overtaking Raskolnikov's mind. And the second symbol is Lazarus, is a, bi a biblical uh, character from the Gospel of John. Lazarus is a man dead uh, for four days and placed in a tomb. When Jesus arrives in town and is told of Lazarus' death, he asks God for the ability to raise Lazarus in order to demonstrate his power and to convince those in the surrounding area that he is indeed the Messiah. Raskolnikov asks Sonia to read this passage uh, to him from her New Testament and uh, Porfiry asks whether Raskolnikov believes in God or not, uh, whether specifically he believes in the truth of the Lazarus story. And Lazarus' return from the dead uh, echoes Raskolnikov's own living death, the madness that closes in on him following the murder, which uh, eventually causes his confession and eight-year sentence in a prison camp. It's there uh, that Raskolnikov uncovers Sonia's same copy of the New Testament. And uh, like a man raised from the dead, he becomes truly penitent, realizing that his remaining years in the camp are not so long and that he will be sustained by the power of Sonia's love and be born into a new life. The other symbol is the cross, uh, the cross that Sonia gives to Raskolnikov before he goes to the police station to confess 
is an important symbol of redemption for him. Throughout uh, Christendom, uh, of course, the cross symbolizes Jesus' self-sacrifice for the sins of humanity. And Raskolnikov denies any feeling of sin or uh, devoutness even after he received the cross. The cross uh, symbolizes not that he has achieved redemption or even understood what Sonia believes religion can offer him, but that he has begun on the path toward recognition of the sins that he has committed. That Sonia is the one who gives him uh, the cross has special significance. She gives of herself to bring him back to humanity and her love and concern for him. Like that of Jesus, um, according to Christianity, uh, will ultimately save and renew him. And the last symbol is the city of St. Petersburg. The city of St. Petersburg, uh, as represented in Dostoevsky's novel, is dirty and crowded. Drunks are sprawled on the street in uh, broad daylight. Consumptive women beat their children and beg for money, and everyone is crowded into tiny, nosy apartments. The clutter and chaos of St. Petersburg is a twofold symbol. It represents the state of society with all of its inequalities, prejudices, and deficits. But it also represents Raskolnikov's delirious, agitated state as he spirals through the novel toward the point of his confession and redemption. He can escape neither the city nor his warped mind. From the very beginning, the narrator describes the heat and the odor coming off the city, the crowds and the disorder, and says... Um, they all contributed to irritate the young man's already existed uh, nerves. And indeed, it's only when Raskolnikov is forcefully removed from the city to a prison in a small town in Siberia that he is able to regain compassion and balance. And uh, let me check the video. How oh, many minutes? Sorry for pausing. Um, so we were talking about the characters, analysis of characters. Um, as you know, the protagonist is Raskolnikov. Uh, the short name is Rotia, um, and uh, he murders Elizaveta and the old woman, and uh, spends uh, the rest of the book coming to terms with his crime and with the touches of madness that follow. It's never clear exactly why Raskolnikov has committed this crime. He does not even keep the things he has stolen from the old woman, but he has earlier developed a theory of criminality that distinguishes between ordinary and extraordinary individuals. And, um... Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry again. So, um, the, um, specifically, uh, the letter, uh, are permitted to overstep uh, some of society's rules in order to create new laws. Raskolnikov is also the character at the center of the novel's many relationships. His friend Razumikhin, sister Dunya and um, mother Pulhiria all try to support him and Porfiry, the investigator, and Svidrigailov, the libertine, oppose him. He has formulated a theory that they are extraordinary people, set apart from the masses, who, in the interest of a great idea, can find a right within themselves to kill others in pursuit of that idea. Unable to stand uh, it any longer, and given an unusually uh, fortuitous uh, opportunity, he kills the pawnbroker Aliona Ivanovna, and unexpectedly her half-sister then robs the uh, pound broker and escapes. Uh, from uh, then on, he is beset uh, with paranoia um, through not guilt. He uh, lurches uh, through the world, 
flirting with capture, sometimes trying to get his uh, confession spoken for him by others, sometimes trying to avoid suspicion altogether. He abandons his mother and sister who have uh, come to town, his um, pity crime and his failure to remain in control of his fate have proven to him that he is not um, a great man as he had hoped. At the end, uh, he finally turns himself in, but still does not believe that his crime was inherently sinful. Sentenced to hard labor, whence he is followed by the faithful Sonia, he works sullenly and cuts himself off from his fellow convicts until first, um, and then Sonia fell, uh, fall ill. When uh, they meet again after uh, their respective uh, recoveries, something has changed in him, and he at last truly repents of his sin. His struggle, profoundly metaphorical, uh, culminates in his uh, resurrection from death and sin um, into love and life. The main drama of the novel centers on his interior conflict, first over whether to kill the pan broker and later over whether to confess and rejoin humanity. Raskolnikov is ill throughout the novel, overwhelmed by his feelings of alienation and self-loathing. And the second um, character is Sonia. Uh, Marmeladov's child from his first marriage. Sonia becomes a prostitute after Katerina complains that she, doesn't not, uh, she does nothing uh, to help the family financially. She also reads the story of Lazarus to Raskolnikov on his request. Sonia later becomes Raskolnikov's confidant, the first person to whom he confesses his crime and travels with him to Siberia, where she pledges to be with him forever. And the other main character is Razumikhin, uh, Raskolnikov's closest and perhaps only one friend, and he becomes an adoptive son to Pulcheria and husband to Dunya. Uh, as Raskolnikov uh, pulls away from the family, Razumikhin grows ever closer. He is a foil to Raskolnikov, a student who is similarly impoverished, uh, but who managed to live without committing a crime and without tipping into insanity uh, with a compare with uh, Raskolnikov. And um, Avdotya Romanovna, um, Raskolnikov's sister, uh, the short name is uh, Dunya, is to be married to Lushin, which Raskolnikov fears is uh, to take place to shore up the family financially and therefore make his own life more comfortable. Dunya loves her brother deeply and eventually marries Razumikhin. Pulcheria Alexandrovna, um, Raskolnikov's mother, and um, she writes to him early in the novel to inform him of Dunya's engagement to lose him. Uh, and Pulcheria loves Raskolnikov's, uh, Raskolnikov uh, dearly and fears for his health when she meets with him in Petersburg. She dies uh, at the end of the novel without fully knowing what her son has done, though she guesses uh, it's something horrible. And uh, Sivitrogailov, uh, one of Raskolnikov's two antagonists, um, Sivitrogailov is a womanizer and a uh, libertine who was once married to Marfa and who has been linked to crimes uh, in their past um, life. And he covers Dunya, who refuses him, and uh, when he later tries to elope uh, with her, she refuses once more, with uh, finality. And Svidrogailov is um, so broken uh, by this, that he shoots himself in the head. Okay. And the other uh, character, the main character, is Aliona Ivanovna, uh, one of Raskolnikov's victims. The pound broker is said um, by some, including Raskolnikov, to be Los, a woman who takes advantage of others and therefore deserves to die. 
Raskolnikov believes until the epilogue that killing the pawnbroker was not entirely immoral because she herself was so wretched a creature. Then uh, Elizaveta Ivanovna, uh, the other of Raskolnikov's victims and um, admitted by Raskolnikov to be innocent. Elizaveta is the shy sister of the pawnbroker who often helps out by serving as a middleman between merchants and buyers in the Haymarket neighborhood. So, these are main characters that we discussed, and uh, of course there are several characters, uh, but I just chose um, main character Raskolnikov and the other characters. They have secondary uh, characters, but I, I didn't um, think that it's... Uh, it was uh, interesting for you and it was important for your exam. So just try to know about these characters and try to analyze their inner sides. Then you will uh, able you will be able to analyze the um, incidents and accidents inside the novel. The other one is analysis of some quotations. You know that it's my favorite uh, method to um, to add some quotes uh, from the original text to our slide because. Uh, in this case, I'm just um, sure that uh, you read something from original. And um, this part, um, you can uh, read it. Um, so, pause the video and read it, and I will explain uh, the meaning. Uh, so, this uh, part... Uh, this quote is from the part two and chapter one. Uh, this quotation illustrates uh, Raskolnikov's sudden realization that by murdering Aliona and Lizaveta, he has completely isolated himself from society. His uh, separation, which began before the murders, is now complete as uh, he has truly crossed over the bounds that formerly kept him tied to the rest of humanity. Indeed, um, one can argue that only because of um, because of um, his increasing alienation and lack of empathy for other people is Raskolnikov able to actually uh, commit the murders. And um, additionally, uh, the act of having uh, physically accomplished the crime uh, makes it necessary for Raskolnikov to cement his uh, understanding of himself as a superman uh, so that he can evade the rather some banal consequences of his action. Um, much of the novel is concerned with Raskolnikov's gradual breakdown and the construction of this identity in the face of his alienation from others. Only when he confesses um, his guilt to Sonia, uh, someone uh, whom he sees as a fellow transgressor of morality, does the start on the path of rejoining society. The second quote, you can again pause the video and read it. And I want to skip to the uh, explanation of this quote. So this ranting uh, comes from part 3, chapter uh, 6. When Raskolnikov is lying in bed, thinking to himself, the language with its abrupt phrases and frequent use of ellipses reflects Raskolnikov's uh, fractured state of mind. It also shows that Raskolnikov is still trapped in a Napoleonic mindset. He believes that the only thing uh, that matters uh, is success in one's endeavors. And Raskolnikov here feels uh, anxious not because he is a murderer, but because he is an unsuccessful murderer, unable to use um, the crime to his advantage and dismiss the guilt from his mind. So he says, all I managed to do was kill, and I didn't even manage that, as it turns out. And uh, he, his need to assure himself of the intellectualized motivations for Aliona Ivanovna's murder, and, uh, and 
his uh, frantic, repetitive justification of his crime, um, his insecurity about the whole matter and uh, accentuate how unlike his Superman ideal he is. This quote also foreshadows Raskolnikov's stubborn protest to Dunya in part 6, chapter 7, that the murder itself was not wrong only his failure to profit from it because if he thought that he if i managed to do uh, if i managed to murder her um uh, i i i wouldn't be uh, so um worry about the result of this <coughs> crime <coughs> and quote number 3 <coughs> it's from the epilogue part the last part <coughs> How it happened, he himself did not know. So try to uh, read it you know, with pausing the video. And I will explain the meaning of this quote. So this quote comes from the epilogue, uh, the uh, climactic moment in which Sonia finally realizes that Raskolnikov truly loves her. The significance is both personal and public, since by showing that he loves a particular person. Raskolnikov demonstrates that he is willing to take his place as a member of society once again. The tears that Raskolnikov sheds um, represent uh, his remorse over his sins and perhaps his joy in realizing that Sonia, the lone individual with whom he has enjoyed a meaningful relationship and loves him. It's only when he realizes that the truly cares for another person that Raskolnikov is finally able to break his uh, alienation from humanity and begin to sincerely repent for his crimes. This newfound uh, love injects his life with fresh meaning and one can argue releases him from the bond of his destructive nihilism. And this quote, uh, he was crushed but by poverty, but the anxieties of his position uh, had of late ceased to weigh upon him. The narrator describes the powerful effect poverty plays on Raskolnikov. Poverty stands as a major theme in the novel and serves as the driving factor for Raskolnikov's crime, despite Raskolnikov claiming uh, of, uh, otherwise. And uh, he leaves <coughs> sorry, <coughs> totally uh, reoccupied with his social class and uh, the way others uh, perceive him. Living in such uh, squalid uh, quarters torments him psychologically, mostly because of his pride. Raskolnikov feels tortured to think others consider him inferior. And we have here two quotes. The first one, um, they are, uh, the investigator the, um, asking um, Raskolnikov if he believes in God or not. And he answers, um, when asked the question point uh, blank by the um, Porphyry, uh, Raskolnikov answers that he believes in God. Of course, uh, this answer uh, becomes complicated by the many in instances uh, throughout the novel where Raskolnikov's faith seems tested and where he expresses nihilistic views and repudiates a belief in a soul or an afterlife. As a product of his time, Raskolnikov li uh, Raskolnikov's life immersed in Russian Orthodox faith. But as a young intellectual, his religious beliefs are tested. And uh, God would not allow anything so awful. This um, quotation means, here Sonia insists that God will protect her family even though their outlook looks dire. Raskolnikov somewhat maliciously suggests that her sister Polenka will have to resort to prostitution to survive just like she did. Sonia's faith in God seems childish against Raskolnikov's cold rationalism. Raskolnikov goes so far to even taunt Sonia with the question that there might not be a God at all. But in the end, Sonia's faith leads the way to Raskolnikov's redemption. And um, so Oedipus' complex in 
Dostoevsky's literary activity. I would say that it's the main um, main part of this um, slideshow. So, uh, what do you know about Oedipus Complex? Uh, if, it, if, it be, if it would be the seminar, I would like to discuss, to have a discussion with you about Oedipus Complex because it's a really interesting part of the literature, and uh, which is um, founded by uh, Sigmund Freud. So, Freud is uh, fascinated by complex and rich personality of uh, Dostoevsky. He points out four facets of uh, Dostoevsky's personality, the creative artist, the neurotic, the moralist, and the sinner. Freud uh, characteristically declares uh, before the problem um, uh, of creative artist, analysis uh, must lay down its arms. So Freud is more interested in Dostoevsky, uh, the neurotic, neurotic and uh, the causes of his neurosis. And Freud uh, argues that Dostoevsky's epileptic attacks, compulsive gambling, uh, his uh, latent uh, homosexuality and his submissive attitude to religious and state authorities are manifestations of his neurosis resulting from his Oedipus complex. So, the Oedipus complex is an uh, essential concept in Freudian uh, psychoanalysis. According to the theory, during the Pallic uh, um, phase, the child recognizes that he is not a, a sole object of his mother's love, and he is jealous and directs his aggression towards his father. So, this is the core idea of uh, Oedipus complex. During the uh, Oedipal phase, the child wants to take place of his father and thus become the object of his mother's love. And uh, this requires uh, identification on the part of the child with his father to obtain his mother's love. And uh, Freud points out um, uh, that the child identifies with the father uh, to an extent that the father becomes the party of child's personality. And this part of child's personality, formed by identification with parents, is uh, called superego by Freud. And... Um, Freud also uh, points out uh, the ambivalence uh, towards father in the mind of child, uh, where uh, there is distinct love and tenderness for the father, along with a desire to kill him. This gives rise to deep guilt in the mind of the child. So, in case, uh, in Dostoevsky's case, uh, Freud argues this emotional crisis arising in his pallic phase is unresolved and gives uh, rise to his neurosis. So Dostoevsky has identified with his father and hence the wish to kill his father is also a desire to kill oneself. Uh, this unresolved and unrepressed conflict results in epileptic attacks which resemble the experience of dying for Dostoevsky. And uh, the guilt arising from uh, his unconscious uh, parricidal desire manifests itself in self-punishing attitudes in Dostoevsky. This severe guilt and desire for self-punishment, according to Freud, is at the back of Dostoevsky's compulsive gambling, which Freud sees as a self-punishing activity. As Dostoevsky's internalized father, his superego, Freud says, is sadistic, and Dostoevsky's ego is masochistic in its desire for self-punishment. In the light of uh, his theory, all literature embodies neurotic uh, conflicts and unconscious instincts in uh, disguised and indir indirect uh, ways uh, so as to make them acceptable. In Oedipus Rex, uh, the hero kills his father unintentionally. In Hamlet, uh, it's uh, carried out by someone else. And in Brothers Karamazov, the deed is carried out by the brother of the protagonist, Dimitri. So Freud also draws attention to a scene in Brothers Karamazov where father Zosima 
falls down at the feet of Dmitri when he learns Dmitri is planning to kill his father. So, if you want to analyze Dostoevsky's literary activity, you should know and you have to know about Oedipus complex and other complexes in psychoanalytics. And you should know the archetypes also. You should learn um, Sigmund Freud's and Jung's um, theories about the um, psychology and archetypes. And then you will be able to uh, analyze his literary activity, his novels and his characters, inner sides, easily. Um, just to read the novel is not this, uh, the key of the knowledge. You should try critically, and that's why I will give you the home task. Uh, firstly, you should read the novel, and uh, then secondly, you should analyze Raskolnikov's personality. Of course, I talked about his character, but I would like you to use your own approach uh, to analyze this character. And if you have any other character, you can compare this character with other characters too. And analyze innocence and mm, guilt motifs in this novel. And compare the novel with other novels related to crime. So um, compare the crime motif of other novels. And uh, it's the end. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.